Indie Film Industry News. Today's expert, Sidney J. Levine. Helping indie filmmakers learn from experts how to succeed with their movies. Hi, I'm Michael Barnard, and this is Indie Film Industry News. We bring you specialized information that will help you succeed in the business of filmmaking. My guest today is Sidney J. Levine, a prominent indie film consultant with decades of experience as a film acquisition executive. Sydney is very active in film markets around the world. She joins us today right here in Hollywood to discuss what you as a filmmaker need to know in order to have your best shot at success with your movie at film festivals and markets. Hi, Sydney. Welcome. Thank you, Michael. So what is a film acquisition executive? A film acquisition executive is the person who represents her company and watches all the newest films. Watching those films, maybe at a festival or at a market, to decide is this the kind of film their company needs? And if it is, then to negotiate with the filmmaker or for the uh, international sales agent who's representing that film, uh, negotiate it with their, her own company to make sure they also see the value of this film for their, com for their company. And now you're an indie independent uh, film consultant. Um, you started a couple of companies here and there. What, uh, what did you start in the late 80s? There was an operation that, uh, that you were working with? Yes, I started a company called Film Finders. I was a film acquisition executive for a U.S. distributor. A U.S. distributor is the one who puts films into theaters, onto home video, onto Amazon for streaming onto television. They distribute it in the territory of U.S. There are distributors all over the world for 60 international territories and they had no access until I started Film Finders to what films were going to be showing at the next big event that everyone had to go to to find films to buy to acquire for their company. Um, the international sales agents who go to these markets to sell their films to acquisition executives, they also didn't know what films were going to show. So I started Film Finders as the first database telling all the films in the world and are the rights available for the territories like U.S. or Mexico or France or Spain. And I gave all that information to the film buyers, the acquisition executives who worked for distributors, as I said, or for international sales agents who also need to acquire films that they in turn can license to the distributors. So Film Finders was the first database and it was very, very well received because no one had such information before. And eventually down the line, it's sold to IMDb, hmm. a big online database. Everyone knows it. They started 10 years after I started Film Finders. Hmm. So they acquired my company in order to become more professionally geared rather than to show the consumers about movie stars and put on advertising. They wanted to show professionals what films are new and what films can they acquire for their company. And now you are uh, working as an independent consultant. You're working with markets and festivals around mm -hmm. the world. Yes. What's the difference between a market and a festival? Good question, especially for young filmmakers. They think, oh, I'm going to be in a festival. It's all over. But for us in the marketplace, that is for the acquisition people that are going to acquire a film, we work the markets. Often a market happens at the same time as a festival, like the Cannes Film Festival has a market with many, many, many more films. And the acquisition executives are watching the films in the market so that they can go and negotiate to buy the rights for their territory. There are big festivals like Cannes, everyone knows it, Toronto, Sundance, and um, Berlin. Those are the major ones where all the buyers are going and the sellers, the acquisition executives are buying, and that's the big news. What are the, uh, there's a cycle uh, throughout mm -hmm. the year. 
-hmm. I think we can take a look at that, where you uh, have listed all the various uh, festivals and markets mm -hmm. that a filmmaker should be aware of. Yes, that's an important, it's called the film circuit. And it happens all year round. All the buyers and sellers go around the world all through the year. It starts after a quiet summer. And it begins with that big yellow circle on my left. It's called Toronto Film Festival. That's after the summer. Every buyer and seller goes to the Toronto Film Festival to see what are the newest films that they can acquire. Um, the fall also has other important festivals, but the most important is where the most of the industry goes. So a few people go to the Venice Film Festival, very few to Telluride. Those are important festivals, but not like Toronto in the fall. Then there are other festivals throughout the year up to... What follows in, uh, in the fall? I mean, what, uh, are there big festivals then? I know that later in the year there's uh, larger, really prominent festivals. What about smaller ones that might be more accommodating yeah. for an indie filmmaker? That's a great question, because there are some. Let's say you are particularly um, making an animated film, or you're Latino making a Latin American or Latino film. There's an important market after Toronto in the fall called Ventana Sur. It's a semi-festival, but mostly a market, very important. Um, in the fall, there's also short film festivals or festivals in New York where you can meet the New York film industry. The festivals usually are places where the industry lives, like New York, LA, France, uh, Cannes, everyone goes, Berlin, everyone in Germany goes. But the smaller festivals, if you have a short, there's a short student film festival. There are festivals all year round for students or for Latino or for horror films or for science fiction animation. So you need to think from the top down as a filmmaker, what's the best one I can get into? And if they don't accept you, because they don't accept many, many people, then you need to think, OK, where do I fit next to that one? And you need to gauge it by when your film is finished, not when the circuit begins. Mm -hmm. So you're on a different time clock. What about um, every, the, you're, you're describing maybe 10% of all the available festivals and markets that one could go to. Mm. You're, you're defining a group that is probably the most important for a filmmaker who wants to have a film become a success? Right. The most important is where the most film professionals are going to see your film. Those are the ones I named, and they have markets. And then there are other festivals with sort of little markets because certain buyers want to buy certain kinds of films, so they know to go to the small festivals. There are more than two festivals a day all year round. You do not want to overdo the festivals because what you really want as a filmmaker is to make money from your film and to be seen by a public that's going to pay for your film. And festivals don't pay. In fact, they cost money. What pays is when you get picked up by a distributor or an international sales agent who starts exchanging money to show your film. So you want to choose the festivals very carefully, because if you show in a little one, then the big one that wants a world premiere is not going to watch your film. You need to start with the ones where the industry goes. That's Cannes or Sundance. Here in LA, there's AFI Film Festival, LA Film Festival. You want to start at the one where most of the professionals go. But if you don't get in, you need to know which ones you fit in, where someone's going to buy your film. You mentioned Sundance, which probably every filmmaker thinks Sundance is the uh, epitome of mm -hmm. anything they can do, which, and it is very big and successful, being way out in Park City, Utah, yeah. of all places. Yeah. Um, what about those filmmakers who don't get into Sundance? Uh, what are some of the alternatives they should also be doing? Right. Well, Sundance is big and very important for American filmmakers because not only do the buyers and sellers go, the acquisition execs, 
but the talent agents are looking for talent. And so, and you're mixing with the most, it's like a Hollywood event. It doesn't matter, it's in Utah, it's Hollywood. So, um, but only 150 filmmakers get accepted and they get 6,000 applications. So even their films don't all get picked up for acquisitions. So they are helping filmmakers learn the online community. How do you show your film and market it online so people can still pay and see your film? But you don't get into Sundance, it's not the end of the world. You're talking about what is relatively new in the realm of movie making, which is online distribution, mm. uh, SVOD, there's a whole bunch of acronyms. Um, what is your feeling about uh, filmmakers who want to or want to skip theatrical or can't find theatrical? Right. There's new opportunities. Yes, there are many opportunities and the key to getting them into it uh, is to be seen to market it so that people know how to find you online. That's the key thing now. And not everything goes theatrically, especially because there are not enough theaters for all the films that are being made. Um, so you need to know from the very start where your website is, where you're gonna show your films, where your audience is, make them come to your website, market them. Then when you go on to Amazon or Netflix or the many new online platforms that are starting, you need to know how to market it and you need a base of people that know you so they go there to watch your films. In Sundance, which as I mentioned is like far away in a beautiful mm -hmm. area in Utah, but there's also in here in uh, Los Angeles, there's also the AFM. What's the difference between uh, AFM and Sundance? AFM is only a market. There's nothing festive about AFM. People are going into s hotel suites, looking at films in the cinemas and buying acquisition executives and making deals to buy the films for their territories. It's not fun, it's work. Yeah, they have parties where you can network, very important, at night, but it's no festivity, it's not a festival. At the same time, AFI Film Fest is happening and executives will sometimes go there to watch a film, but mostly the films in that festival in Hollywood are being sold in the AFM, which is in Santa Monica. That's an hour across town. So the market is very separate from the festival. There's um, also an, another issue, I wonder if you could describe it kind of briefly, of uh, contests. Uh, how do contests play into a filmmaker who wants to get a film sold? Do they help feed the, uh, the festival circuit? Contests are very important. Every competition is important. There are pre-market workshops. Um, anything that you can win or be accepted in the young talents that are held at the Berlin Film Festival. There are talents, it's called. There's a Rotterdam pre-market before your film is even made where they introduce you to money making. Anything you win, anything you get chosen for puts you a notch above the competition because you already have a marketing hook. Now you might know, uh, the marketing hooks are usually the names, what famous names are in your film. But as a young filmmaker, you're not gonna get the famous names unless you're very close to them. Um, but you need hooks. Hook is winning a contest. Hook is a screenwriting contest, doesn't even matter what kind. Hmm. If you have winner, uh, there it is, you're a winner. Those laurels, they count Those whether laurels. it's contest, whether it's a film festival. Everything helps sell the film. Yes. What would, he, what would you recommend a, a, a young filmmaker who has somehow cobbled together a feature mm -hmm. film, mm -hmm. and it's really good, mm -hmm. they're all really good, uh, to do, uh, let's say, starting with the uh, Toronto Film Festival mm -hmm. as the beginning of mm -hmm. that whole circuit. What would you recommend as a process? Well, first, the filmmaker doesn't have to start with the beginning of the festival. Let's say the film is not ready in the fall in September for Toronto. Don't rush. Maybe it's not ready for Sundance. Don't rush. But look at the next festival where most of the people go. Berlin is in February. Depending on when your film is done, look at what is the big festival and apply to it. Even if you're making a short, apply because they show shorts as well. Um, if you don't get into that top one, there's no shame in that. Look at the genre of film you're making and look at the top festival in that genre. And don't 
go too long in time. So when you're finished, if it's April or June or February, then look at the festivals on the circuit at that time that fit that definition of being the biggest, that is, with the most professionals going. One thing uh, filmmakers always ask, is there a market for short films? There's more and more of a market for short films. The smaller the item, the telephone, the shorter the film. And there are short films for students. A very good one is held in Spain um, at the, um, now I'm losing the name, um, San Sebastian Film Festival, mm. late fall, has a student film festival for short films. And you network with the big important people. So getting your film as a student into a student short film festival, again, there's a top one, San Sebastian, and there are other ones. Very important to get to know them. Great, thank you very much. We learned a lot this episode about getting on the international film circuit to boost the chances for greater success for the movies we make. Uh, my guest has been Sydney Levine, and you can reach Sydney at Sydney Levine, Sydney's Buzz, pardon me, Sydney'sBuzz.com. I hope you'll join us soon for another episode of Indie Film Industry News. We'll be coming back with more information for you to help you be successful as a selling filmmaker.